welcome to everyone who's joining us. Just having a relaxing hangout here in the pasture with Rafi and Finn. Colorado or horse time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Finn's doing his job over here. He's gotta gotta keep this wild horse under control. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Just hanging out. Beautiful Colorado day. Sun is shining. It's a little bit windy, but that's all right. Welcome to everyone who's just popping in. Drop a comment in the chat. Let me know where you're from. his job is to move the horse places where he doesn't need to go. Right, Raffi? I know. <laughs> How many breeds have I ridden so far? We are at 60 breeds so far. Got a couple new ones coming up, hopefully this month. English is not your first language. That That's okay. That, you, uh, I guarantee you speak better English than I do any other language. <laughs> it is a lot of horse breeds. It's been so much fun.
Rafi likes to get really close to the camera on lives. Uh, <laughs> he thinks he should be the star. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need to just see your nose, buddy. <laughs> Lisa, are you a horse rider? showing off your very cute nose. There you go. I'm from Iceland, so the only breed I've gotten to ride is the Icelandic. Hoping to try a non-Icelandic when I go to the UK next month. Awesome! Well, Icees are an amazing breed. <laughs> They're so much fun. So, for only having the one breed in Iceland, I would say you guys are pretty lucky for the breed that you have. That would be really fun though, getting to try a different breed. Do you have any in mind specifically or? Yeah, there's something so amazing about just the history that you guys have with the Icelandic horse and the the uses for them and just everything that, you know, everything that you still use them for is so fun. I'm gonna see if you can find a ranch close to where you're saying. That's an awesome idea. I love to do that when I'm traveling to check and see, you know, who offers riding lessons and uh, if there's any sort of trekking or hacking opportunities, trail rides that you can go out on. It's a really fun way to get to know the area. And then just getting on a different horse is, it's such a fun experience. They're all so different. Rappy's watching a very noisy truck coming up the road here. <laughs> Finn's keeping an eye on it too. Aren't you Finn? It'll be interesting to try a larger horse. Yes, it it really is one of those interesting things. I feel like when I ride Icelandics, you, you don't feel like you're on a small horse at all. And then a lot of times when I see pictures, like I'll take this guy out for a ride and I have a friend that has a Clydesdale. And when there are pictures of us out on the trail ride, it's so funny because I look so small on Rappi compared to the Clydesdale. Rappi's a pretty short Icelandic though. He's not, uh, I'm sitting on the ground so he looks bigger right now, but he's, he's not quite 13 hands, so he's a little guy. He makes up for it though with his fun and sure-footed attitude. <laughs> right, although you're just showing everybody your nose right now. Mm-hmm, yeah.
So I'm out in the back pasture right now. This is one of my favorite views from the barn. You can see kind of a pretty great panorama. There's the pastures all kind of over here. And then there's the border collie. <laughs> and then some of the trails that we ride in are kind of up along these this hill over here. Come here, bud. Not sure how tight your gelding is, but your mare is pretty small. Yeah, it can feel very different sitting on, on the different horses. Sometimes though it's funny because I feel like sometimes the smaller horses will have a bigger gait and you know, the bigger horses don't, don't always feel bigger. You know, it, it kind of depends on how they carry themselves and what their gates are like. Are, are any of your Icelandics five gated or do you have four gated ICs? This little hoodlum is four gated. So he's got walk trot, canter, and tolt. He really prefers trot though. Like he he is a good he has a good tolt, but he prefers trot. Just four gated. I like that because you get just you know, you get nice tolt, you get nice trot. Flying pace is really fun though, <laughs> as well. <laughs> Hey, welcome to everyone who is popping on. We're here in Colorado, hanging out with an Icelandic gelding right here named Raffi, a border collie who is herding the perimeter named Finn. And you're here with me as well, Alyssa from Discover the Horse. So thanks for joining us. Yep, that is your favorite view. Hey, David, welcome back. Man, you are good at catching me on these lives. Well done. I was out here today getting Rappy for a ride and I just decided it was the perfect time to pop on here. We're out in the pasture right now and it's just so pretty. How is your Icelandic mare doing? We have a couple of people with ices on here now. Sensing a trend again, I love it. David is about to sign the papers for purchase on a 10 acre horse property in Alberta. Congratulations! Oh, that is so exciting! That will be so much fun. I love having horses at home. I grew up having the horses uh, Right at my place, my parents had a 72 acre hobby farm in Northwestern Wisconsin. And I just remember, you know, you could wake up and just look out your window and see the horses there. And it's such a wonderful feeling. I'm so excited for you, congrats. Mm, thank you, Rappy, that was snotty.
Nyoka will be in your front yard. Oh, that will be so nice. I always love it too when they can see the front of your house and they like they know when you get up in the morning so they like they like nicker at the at the house. <laughs> ah, and you'll get another horse. What are you thinking? Are you thinking another Icelandic or fjord or different breed? What do you think? Retired Icelandic for company. Oh, perfect. Welcome, Asmar from Argentina. We're here in Colorado. Rafi likes to do a lot of watching when we hang out in the pasture. You'd think he would just be sitting here eating, but he loves to just like keep an eye on everything that's happening. Sometimes there are cows that are over in that field. I don't see any there right now today, but. everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta go back to work. Ben is on never-ending patrol when we're out at the barn. <laughs> if there's not horses out, he will find bugs, he will find lights, the other day he was actually looking at the birds up in the sky. There were some hawks flying over and he was herding the birds from the ground. So he's a very special herding dog. <laughs> Welcome to everyone who just popped on. Let me know what the last breed of horses you rode in the comments. The last one I rode is this little fuzzball. He's an Icelandic and he's actually, you can see like, he's got really really thick winter hair it started to uh, like really fluff out this week he has no problem with colorado winter temperatures it'll actually get even fuzzier than this but he's my little teddy bear <laughs> yes, teddy bears. It's it's the perfect description of them. I mean, I feel like their personalities are that way a lot as well, but then when they get that thick winter hair. Big, fluffy, cuddly teddy bears.
The hard part though is in the spring when they start shedding out all of this hair because it like it gets everywhere. There's so much hair. I feel like he's always the last to stop shedding and then the first to start growing his hair here again at the barn. He's having a very relaxing day. <laughs> This is kind of one of those things that I never get tired of doing, just sitting out here. I just grabbed him from up by the barn and I've got Finn here with me and just came out to the pasture. Finn is giving himself another job now. But I just love coming out, sitting here and hanging out with the horses. Poison lollipop, welcome, hello. <laughs> Raffi really does have more than just that cute little nose, but he loves to be so close to the camera. Hey, how are you doing? enjoying one of these last few days here. I'm actually going to be going out for a film trip starting on Friday. So I will be gone for over three weeks. I'm guessing when I get home it's going to be a, a little bit different weather-wise. I think this is going to be much more covered in white snow than it is now. <laughs> Lisa, you have the exact rope halter. <laughs> these rope halters are amazing. I think I have had this one for Oh, I don't even know, probably like 15 years. I've used on so many horses. You can actually see, like I use clip on reins a lot and I just clip it on so I ride with a rope halter and it, this is getting to the point where it's like, it's almost coming apart. I probably should get a new one. David said I had to pause the stream as the lawyer called signing the papers on Friday morning for my acreage. So David is buying a horse property up in Canada. He's got an Icelandic mare. So exciting. That's such a cool thing when you're at that point with horses where you can have your own horse property. Alexander. My horse's name is Rappy, so it's H-R-A-P-I. I also call him Raptor for the nickname. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> Poison Lollipop, what is your opinion about Gypsy Vanners? Oh, there is my horse close up. They're your favorites. I love Gypsy Vanners. So I actually got to do a couple of different filming sessions with them. I went down to Florida and met up with Dennis Thompson from Gypsy Gold. And he is actually one of the people, he and his wife, they imported Gypsy Vanners to the United States and started the Gypsy Vanner Registry. So it was so much fun to meet them. They have a really, really cool place down in Florida where you can actually go and meet all of the horses. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's kind of like a fairy tale world that he has there. He's such a cool, cool guy. And then I also met up with another breeder in Minnesota, Hidden Ponds, Ponies and Cobs. And we got to do riding and driving there. Just so much fun. They're, they're such a great breed. David, I love my rope halter and I learned how to adjust all the knots to custom fit to her. That is awesome. I've actually had that on my list to learn how to like tie and refit my knots. You can see mine tends to kind of go down on his nose. I oftentimes have to readjust it and tighten it a bit, but that would be a good thing to learn how to do a custom fit.
Super simple, learned on a three minute video on YouTube. That's awesome. I'm gonna have to look that one up. YouTube is amazing. I love YouTube. This year the corona is a big problem, Delta virus, yep. It has uh, it's definitely limited the travel that we've been able to do and the filming. We're at 60 breeds so far for the project and hoping we'll be able to get that up number up soon. Get back to more international travel. We were just in Iceland a month and a half ago. Lisa, do I have a favorite coat color? I love that question. So I have to say I have never picked out a horse based on their color. Um, but I do have a favorite color and with Icy's they call it Blue Dun. Uh, here in the States they would also call that Gruya. It's that mousy gray color. A lot of times they'll have that uh, dorsal stripe and then zebra markings on the legs. For me, I don't know why, that's just been one of my favorite horse coat colors. It's just such a pretty, pretty color. You start at the throat knot. Okay, so you'd probably start on that one then. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because then you probably build it out. Oh, I'm gonna totally have to watch that. Poison Lollipop, do you watch Spirit Riding Free? I, I don't think I've seen that. I've seen the Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron movie um, I actually got to meet and uh, ride a Kiger Mustang Stallion, so they're actually the breed that, the, uh, that Spirit was based off of, and uh, they're, they're a neat, neat breed. They've got that same, that dun coloring, some of them are Gruya. Alexander, your horse is relaxed, <laughs> cool and neat. Yeah, he, uh, he just loves to chill. He is all about kind of just doing the minimum to have the most fun and enjoyable time. When we're out on the trail, he's totally willing to go fast and like charge up mountains, but he will still exhibit like the least energy possible to get to the top. <laughs> Oh, the chin knot, David. Okay, so the one right at the bottom here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not the best with knots, so I'm gonna have to watch the video and see if I can actually accomplish it. When I've done uh, backcountry trips with the horses, you have to highline them, and then when you're attaching pack saddles and stuff, there's all these complicated knots. And I, I really try my best, but I have to like refresh them every single time because <laughs> I totally forget how to do them. Lisa, you would love to try a Mustang. Well, you might have to put it on the list because I bet you would really enjoy them. They've, they've got a lot of similarities in regards to just being like totally rugged and sure-footed and tough horses, you know, like the Icy's. Um, but then there's also the different types of Mustangs, so you can get kind of the more like Spanish style Mustang, which is a little more, you know, almost like an Andalusian sort of feel. Um, and then you've got the BLM Mustangs that are just this crazy mix of horses that have been out on the range for decades. And that's a fun one too, because you'll see like draft cross type uh, Mustangs and the Kigers are super interesting because they're in a specific area in Oregon, the Steens Mountain Range. So they've kind of been more isolated and kept true to their type, which is uh, just also really fun to see. Welcome to everyone who's popping on. Drop a comment. Let us know where you're from or if you were a horse rider. It's 
kind of windy out here right now. My hair is going everywhere. <laughs> So we've got a lot of parks around here that we can ride and hike. This little area over here is called Elephant Butte. And then we have the Three Sisters Park, which is just over this ridge here. And then that is Evergreen Mountain. Yep, nope, sorry, that's my horse's nose. Oh, we've got Evergreen Mountain over here. One of the amazing things about Colorado is we just have so much open space to explore and ride in. So we're very lucky right from the barn here. I can actually take a trail that goes up over the pasture, out of the pasture here, and then you can ride all the way to several of these parks. Just got a bunch of chat messages here. Sorry guys, didn't see those. Which horse is fast? Oh man, uh, one of the faster horses I've ridden lately is the Thoroughbred. We went to Kentucky and filmed there. I rode a horse that raced in the 2020 Kentucky Derby. David, you do not unknot anything. You just wiggle then until they're loose and move them up or down. Move on to the next best to do it wet and then leave it to dry. Okay, that makes total sense. That way it is uh, that way it is easier to do. Yeah, if I tried to do anything with these knots right there, here I have a feeling I would not be able to get anything undone. What is my zodiac sign? Yours is a Leo. As a Leo, you sometimes feel confident. Feeling confident is awesome. I actually don't know what my zodiac sign is. I'm not sure. <laughs> David, what a great pleasure to find you here. Always a better day. I'm, I'm delaying your trip to see Yoka. Oh no, tell her I apologize, but I am glad you're here hanging out with us. <laughs> Alexander, I have one horse, this guy right here. I don't have any donkeys. I had a donkey growing up. Um, not that creatively, I named him Eeyore. He was a miniature donkey. Uh, he is now living happily with my aunt in Georgia. She has a small hobby farm and she wanted to have a donkey for her kiddos, so he's there. Carvella, welcome. A big greeting to you. I love your videos. Oh, thank you so much. I love making them. I'm excited because I'm heading out on Friday. I actually had kind of a last minute trip come up. I found a really good deal on flights and have some fun opportunities. So I'm headed to England on Friday. I cannot wait. Stay tuned on that one, but we might be featuring the Clydesdale and the Shire and the Fell. Still working out the logistics on that, but I'm just really excited to, to get out. 
We were in England a couple of years ago on a short film trip and filmed at the Royal Windsor Horse Show with the British Appaloosa. And then we also went to Dartmoor and Exmoor and Cornwall. Whereabouts will you be in England? I am working on planning that right now. It's looking like I'm going to be spending a little bit of time kind of in the London area and then also near Bristol and then potentially up near Sunderland. So figuring out all the logistics right now. I picked kind of a bad time because the weather is not the best, but we filmed a lot of episodes in not so great weather, so we'll just deal with whatever we get. <laughs> I'm ever in my horse phase, I play a game in Roblox called Horse Valley. Ooh, I haven't heard of that. I learn how to take care of horses. That is a great thing to know how to do. There's a lot of different things. Oh, Rappy's tired. <laughs> oh yeah, you poor boy. Yeah, being on YouTube is so hard. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, right? Your pooch seems to be keeping a wide arc away from your horse. Do they get along? <laughs> That's a great question. So Finn, his favorite thing in the world is herding. Uh, but we had to come to an agreement that horses were not something to actually herd actively in regards to coming up and nipping their heels. So the agreement that we have is he has to stay a little ways away from Rappy. If I'm in the arena, I actually put him on the outside of the fence so he just runs around the arena. So he's kind of making his own little arena perimeter right now. <laughs> but it's a good way to exercise my dog and Rappy and Finn get along pretty well. Sometimes I think Rappy's like, oh, why is that dog constantly moving? <laughs> But they go on a lot of trips together. Great question, Lisa. How do you usually find the places you go to for riding? I really want to make sure... Whoops, sorry, chat disappeared. There we go. I really want to make sure that the place I go to treats their horses well and all of that. That is a great question. So. Because I am filming for the project, I don't always go to places that are publicly available for people to ride. Like a lot of times I'll go to a private owner's place or I'll meet up with a breeder, that sort of thing. But I do love to find opportunities where other people can go and ride as well. Or when I'm on vacation not filming for the project, I like to look for... Sorry, my horse is showing you his legs. Um, <laughs> I like to look for places that are also you know really good rides and treat their horses well because it, it is it's very important so one of the things i will start with is just looking online um put in google and you're gonna actually see a lot of places that have reviews and read those reviews and see what people are saying about the horses so you can google riding lessons specific area you can google trail ride in a specific area or horse riding and if you look on google you'll actually find and these businesses popping up and then kind of dig into the reviews and from there you can also go most of them are going to have Facebook pages so go to the Facebook page and take a look at the photos that they're posting a lot of times they're going to post photos that are going to be from recent trips and you'll actually be able to see the condition of the horses the condition of the tack the types of riding they're doing that sort of thing so that would be my suggestion for making sure it's the type of place that you want to be going to and supporting. <laughs> Thanks for the explanation. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he keeps life interesting. Don't you, Finn? Uh-huh. Yeah, you're
you're welcome. Hope that helps. Definitely just, you know, do some exploring and you know, another thing you could do is if there's a Facebook group in that area, um, or there's a group called Equestrian Adventuresses on Facebook, a really great group of people there. You can always post and see if anybody has suggestions for a specific area to go to. If I could be an animal, what would I be? You'd be a horse or a kiwi. <laughs> Oh, that's a fun question. Um, oh man. I, oh, I don't know. I mean, horse is a very like obvious answer for me because I spend almost all of my time around these guys and it would be really fun to be a horse. I also am really fascinated by hawks. We get a lot of hawks around here. I'm actually surprised there aren't any out right now. We have a hawk's nest that's just up over in this tree over here. I think they must have a very interesting life. I think that would be a fun one to, to live like a hawk for a little while. <laughs> Alexander, have I had ponies? I had a Pony of America growing up. She was one of the first horses that I rode. And so that is a Shetland crossed with an Appaloosa. She was a very fun pony. She was very stubborn. Um, I've ridden quite a few ponies for the quest. I've ridden, uh, let's see, lately there was... There's the Exmoor Pony, the Dartmoor Pony. There were a couple of ponies in Malaysia, the Kuta Paddy and the Bajau Pony. Those were fun ones. The Fjord Pony, depending on who you ask, Fjord Pony or horse, um, depending on what height they are as well. Uh, I rode a Fjord um, just, let's see, three weeks ago, something along those lines. Last question, do you watch anime? You know, I really don't watch too much TV at all. Um, I tend to spend almost all of my time researching breeds, editing videos, and setting stuff up for the project. That really has uh, taken up almost all of my time lately. I will check that group out. You're a bit nervous there might not be much available where you will be. You know what, why don't you send me a message too and let me know, uh, you can go on Facebook on Discover the Horse and send me a message um, or just comment on one of the videos and let me know where you're gonna be. I can do a little digging too and see if I have any suggestions for you. I think you'll like that Equestrian Adventurous's group as well. It's run by uh, a lady named Crystal Kelly, and uh, there's just a lot of really fun women on there. And if you introduce yourself and kind of tell people what you're up to, it's fun to meet fellow, fellow equestrians. My horse is literally standing over me right now. <laughs> Rappy. I know. Alrighty gang, well I think I might pop my helmet on here and finish up with a little ride. We'll wrap up a few of these questions. Have you any experience with Mongol horses? They are fascinating how their lives are so closely woven into the fabric of Mongol culture. I have not met any of them yet. They're actually one of the horses that a lot of people ask me about and I can not wait to get to Mongolia and film and kind of bring you guys along. I know we're going to learn so much and meet so many cool horses. The videos that I've seen um, and the people that have heard that have been over there uh, just seems like an amazing, amazing place with so many cool stories.
Lisa, thank you. I applied for the group. You're welcome. Okay, guys, I'm gonna send you set send you. I'm gonna set you down here for a minute, and I'm gonna get my helmet on. I apologize if you see horse feet. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, helmet is on, hair is still everywhere. As I mentioned, it is very windy out here today. I'm gonna pop on Rappi and we'll finish up this live with just a little ride here. So hold on, just cause I gotta jump up on him bareback. So don't get dizzy here. <laughs> I'll try not to drop you. sorted okay everybody's still with us <laughs> and I put a little gorilla pod on my phone today but it's a little bit harder to get to the chat when I'm live here no need to apologize horse feet are great <laughs> yeah I agree with you horse feet are great I always love seeing the different sizes, you know, when you see those draft horses, like their feet are just so big. All right, guys, I'll bring you over for a little through the ears view over here before we head out. David, got to get you a little virtual ride since you, since you waited to go to the little mare. All right, we'll head back over to the view over here. Finn is happy because we're finally moving. <laughs> One more little Colorado view. Like I said, the next time I think I'm going to get this view in a few weeks, it's probably going to be white. We're pretty lucky here. We get a lot of snow, but we also get a lot of sun. He's ready to go. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we're going to end this here. Thank you all so much for joining me. Really appreciate you hanging out, talking horses with me, and I will see you all later. Have a wonderful day, evening, morning, whatever time it is for you. <laughs> see you guys. The last question, is Rafi barefoot? <laughs> he is actually. I, uh, I do use some renegade hoof boots on him at times when we do harder stuff, but he's barefoot right now. Thanks for the stream. Thanks, for Thanks, David. Good luck on your house. I am so excited for you. You'll have to share some photos at some point. Bye, Alexander. All right, take care, guys. Yoka's barefoot too. Yep. You know, they're pretty, they're pretty hardy little guys. <laughs> All right. Goodbye from the border collie. Rappy's back to eating grass already. <laughs> We're going to finish up our ride. <laughs> Take care guys. Have a great day.